Today, we're gonna talk about what kind of meat to eat on a carnivore diet and a keto diet and how it should be prepared if you have histamine intolerance. Welcome everyone, welcome to my very humble channel. Now living out here in the boonies where we had a freeze and my pipes froze and I had no water, no water for myself, for the dog, for the horses. But what doesn't take you out makes you strongest. Now let's get into the meat. What kind of meat? People ask me if they can have, let's say, shrimp chicken breasts, hot dogs, ham, bacon, all types of meats without actually thinking about their own individual tolerance of these particular meats or if they're trying to drive ketosis or don't even get me started on the protein shake. So I want to break it down what you really should be taking in for your protein on a carnivore diet and of course carnivore is the same as keto. Protein amount, type, and timing is everything. So let's go deeper into the best types of protein. That's going to be beef. Yes, beef is very incredibly packed with amino acids, iron, and depending on the cut of that meat, you've got fat-soluble vitamins and minerals like potassium. Beef. And that means beef organs, beef thymus, beef kidney, all of those things. Heart, tongue, packed with omega-3s. And like I said, we've got zinc, copper, manganese, all types of lovely things. Vitamin C. When you're doing the chicken breast, you're not getting the same amino acid profile. You do get a good amount of potassium but you're not going to be getting the iron or of course some of the other minerals as you do in red meat and sort of a bloody red meat. The organs of the cow are supreme, just way up here. A lot of you guys are still just eating whatever, going to the markets and going to Sam's Club, people in the US or to Costco, do not if you have histamine, especially, I think everybody should not get their meats from Kroger's, from Ralph's, from, from Sam's Club, from Costco. And the reason why I say this is I had a consultation with a woman today. She was sensitive to everything, including meat. And I said, well, what's the quality of the meat? Well, I get it from Costco. Now, lately, as of late, I am talking to women in particular it's very interesting with the women that don't like grass-fed beef. They think it tastes weird. And people get used to soy and corn-fed cows where it's very juicy, tender, lots of fat on that, that cut of meat or beef, but just loaded in inflammation. And then you take in that inflammation, and if you have inflammation, you react. She couldn't figure out why she wasn't getting rid of severe histamine responses because these carnivore gurus say all you have to do is eat meat and all your inflammation is going to go down and your A1C and your insulin is going to drop and if you fast on top of that but of course this is not true you really do need to put your pennies to the side in a piggy bank and save up for pastured pork grass-fed beef raw butter, if you can, these types of meats really bring down your inflammation. So a lot of you are dealing with thyroid problems, blood sugar problems, and anything that's inflammatory spikes the blood sugar, makes it very difficult to absorb the nutrition from these meats and fats when that animal was inflamed. It really depends if it's dry hung or wet hung. 
if you have histamine intolerance, I'm telling you, you must, must, must consider the, the quality of meat. Now, I know it sounds gross to boil meat, like unappealing, but sometimes y'all got to shite or get off the pot on trying to heal your body. Boiling the meat creates a perfect environment to kill the bacteria all the way around that particular cut of meat. And some of you are so reactive, that's what you got. So the quality, the way you prepare it, and the way you store it. If you have histamine intolerance, you got to freeze, you got to, if you're going to prep your food, freeze it, take it out the night before, let it thaw, cook it, eat it that day. Because when it sits in your refrigerator, bacteria is growing on it. A lot of you have histamine intolerance, don't know it. But if you're having a hard time sleeping, if you're bloated, if you just don't feel well, if you don't have the energy, you have to think about not only the quality of the food, but how it is stored. Very important. So we got the cuts of meat, right? What What's the best types of meat? It's going to be fatty cuts, obviously. Fatty, like ribeyes, but that's super expensive. We got ribeyes. We got pork belly. If you can get past the pork, pork belly to me is like everything because you can cut it into strips and make pork belly fries or bacon and put it in a container and take it with you as a snack because it's high in fat and low in protein. And that's what you want for snacks. You don't want pure protein. You don't want to just snack on pork rinds. That's a desperation. Like I'm flying somewhere. I'm on a road trip. There's nothing else. And there's pork rinds. Pork rinds are something you should not be eating on the daily. I do need to do a video about that. Uh, fatty cuts of meat that you take with you. I love pork belly bacon. So pork belly that's been cut into bacon strips. It's uncured. There's nothing on it. And you can cook it. It's crispy. It's divine. And you would take that into Tupperware. It doesn't oxidize as quickly because it's mostly fat. Plop it in the mouth. Keep going. Do not use food as entertainment. If you have a blood sugar dysregulation, you're going to have to eat at least five meals. That's small breakfast, small mid-morning. Then you're going to have lunch, mid-afternoon, dinner. I can go on and on and on on how to really... That's my dog. All that noise and craziness is my dog. Yes. So now we have the type of meat, fatty meats, salmon, sardines, but don't do any sardine fast. Salmon, sardines. Um, people ask about shrimp. Okay, look, if you want to have shrimp here and there, oysters here and there, right? Especially if you've got, um, uh, if you have a thyroid problem, oysters are great. So for the short term, doing desiccated oysters is so great. It has selenium and it has iodine and not that potassium iodide which orally is a, it's horrible. You cannot do iodine without selenium, but now I'm just packing in a bunch of stuff in one video. I hope this helps. The timing of your food is everything. The type of food is everything. The quality of your meat specifically and the fat, fat's a whole nother video, but I've done that. Types of fats, right? Butter is the most nutritious, but a lot of you react to the way in casing still left in the butter. So then you try ghee and you're still reactive. Well, then you've got to go to lard. Another thing people need to do while my dog is gulping water, which you need to do, is look for your local farms. I don't understand why some people are going to Sam's Club. Costco, do not buy your meat from these stores. The stuff that they do to that meat before it hits a, your tongue is disastrous and inflammatory. The quality of meat, the fatty cuts of meat, the timing and the amount, right? I've gone through the amounts for men, for women, if you're active, if you have a gallbladder issue, tons of videos. So check out more videos on that subject. I hope this helps. Comment below if you guys are bored with your carnivore diet. How to spice it up without spicing it up. Because the best thing to do is eat as clean and as simple as possible. And allow your taste buds to, as they say, 90 days turnover. 
so things taste different. You don't crave things. Like you don't have to add sauce. You don't have to have a lot of flavor. Just allow really good cuts of meat to be flavorful. Yes. And if you're going to eat deer meat, which you can, which is more lean, I really recommend it. I had deer today. I was like, why do people not like deer and elk? It is divine. And especially the ones in this area because the ones up north they be doing stuff mm -hmm. that whole deer disease so come down south to get your deer because then you're good you get to go all right guys because it has been a crazy crazy year and especially the last month i've been gutted tired. I was going to release the challenge this month, but my horse got cancer. A uh, storm came through. I lost <laughs> water. I finally have water today. My horse is on his last cancer treatment and the vets are like, it's going away. He's at three. And she's like, I think we're going to be done. That's a whole nother video. So I'm really excited to watch you literally watch the tumor go poof, gone. Because I don't know what I would do without my boo-boo. Yes, my fur baby husband child. He is the king. Thunder. You can find me at stephanieperson.com to book a consultation. I got your back. Been doing this a long time and lots of people. And I love it. You can also go to Instagram, which is Stephanie Ketogenic, my Facebook fan page, which is Stephanie the Business Person, or sign up for my month to month subscription based course where I cover all three diets because not all one diet is meant for everyone. No, everyone reacts differently. So when people comment, go to the comment section and I'm like, I did carnivore. I didn't take any electrolytes and I was amazing. I'm like, bye Felicia. <laughs> bye. Yes. Life is good. Life is tough. This was a hard last couple weeks, but oh, and my pony, that's a whole nother story. His bullocks dropped and he literally went nut bad crazy. Nut bad crazy. I'm going to show the video. Yeah, my my little pony. So he don't got no more nuts anymore. And now we can have some more peace on this land.